Welcome to our second part of the SAS org chart series. I'm here with John Calvani. Welcome, John. Well, hey, Sean. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for having us again. So last time we uh, scratched the surface talking about how to build your Series A uh, org chart. And today we're going to move up a little, right? Yes, excited to talk about a, a few bigger companies. Unisol, that video or, or that talk was awesome. That was really great. But I think scaling upwards, like we'll see a lot more really interesting things within these businesses. Exactly. So today, our our agenda today for today is Series B startups and uh, North. How do you take uh, Series B startup all the way up to an IPO? How does your uh, SaaS org chart look like and how... Um, how to build out specifically sales and go to market teams. So uh, I'm excited to maybe uh, share my screen and we can, we can dive right into uh, uh, an example here. So um, we're, we're again talking about uh, David Sachs uh, template, right? For building our, our SAS uh, org chart and talking about a, a series, thinking about a series B startup. This is where, you know, in the, in the past, uh, we spoke about a series A, that's really like a friends and family, you know, you build up a team up to 30, 40 people. Uh, but this is where it really becomes a company, right? It's not, it's not just like, a uh, a, uh, a game anymore. And, uh, typically to build up an organization of about a hundred, uh, uh, people, right. When, when, uh, fully fledged, uh, uh, series B startup, what we're talking about here kind of, you know, high level, what the main buckets look like in terms of, of the different activities of the company. So, uh, whereas at the, at the beginning of a, of a startup's life, uh, it's, it's kind of more, uh, well distributed here. We start seeing a really heavy focus on sales and marketing, right? So if we're looking at a hundred person company, uh, almost, uh, half, half of it over, over half of it is coming from, from, uh, sales and marketing at this stage you're, you're hiring a vp that really takes ownership of, of each one of these uh functional areas in the past that might have been an individual contributor or like head of sales or, or you know somebody who had a little bit of experience but here you want somebody who's already you know done it and succeeded to, to really uh take you to the next level same thing with uh right cto you're going to have a serious um r d um, organization so so that's that's what we, we have here um, at, a, at a series uh, B startup. Um, and then, right, taking this to the next level, right? How does this scale into your, right, to your C and D and, and you know, however many subsequent rounds nowadays, right? You know, you can even go beyond the, the alphabet. Uh, so, so a series C startup is, is something, right? This is like a real, a real organization, uh, you know, typically uh, targeted at around 400 or five, 500 employees. Similar to a, to a Series B, here you're, you're talking about having also in terms, in terms of the leaders, right, of, of each function, uh, you're going to start hiring C levels, right? So you're going to have a CPO to lead the product team, a CRO who will be directing the different types of, uh, you might have several different VPs, right? You might have a, a regional VP, you might have a strategic VP of sales, um, and, and uh, same thing for marketing and for and for for uh, right a CFO for for GNA. Um, John, what's your take? Like, at what point do you really, you know, bring in um, a C level uh, to hire to, to manage each function? And like, why why do you need that over over like a VP? Yeah, and I think this is uh, the the easy answer, and that's when you need to. Um, it's so important to to bring in a C suite person. I think when the need is there because for two reasons, I think. One, they're very expensive. If you're bringing in someone and, and they want that C-suite title or, or you have a business that's that's an, in the need of that, you're going to be looking for very tenured folks um, who come with considerable amounts of compensation as well and, and possible equity in your business that will be a need. Um, the, the biggest thing is, is the C-suite is really working both ways behind the scenes. So they're working with the business internally and 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 pushing things and strategies and go-to-market um, things out but they're also working with, with the board and the ceo and they're strategizing they usually will have a seat at the table um, helping make sure the business is moving in the right direction so it's so so it's so important right because usually these people will be brought in with equity 
um, and a very high cost. So you really want to make sure, okay, this is what we need to do. And this is the person to do it. He or she will get the job done for us. Um, they really feel a part of the business. Absolutely. And, and, and I'd say that like it's across the whole board, CTO, um, CRO, CFO, every, it, it, do it when you need to. But obviously when you get to a serious C point and you start having large investors and you have a board um, and a lot of advisors, senior advisors, you know, you need someone who can operate in both in both fashions. Sure. sure. So also, also at this stage, like uh, David Sachs points out, uh, you're you're at a point where you might have started in one region, like U.S. or Europe, right? You're you're pushing for international expansion, so you you might have like a like a local GM. If you're you know if you're going to APAC, for example, so you'll have a an APAC GM. Uh, you also want to start thinking about acquisitions, maybe not large ones, but more like aqua hires more for, for, from a talent perspective, but really like kind of, you know, stretching uh, your, your muscles and, and thinking like inorganic, because at this point you're like, you really want to get some velocity going. Yeah, so, when you have the capital to exactly. hire, you know, inorganic can, can really boost your business quickly. Exactly. So let's take a look, uh, John, right? So speaking like about, about a Series C startup, let's uh, dive into, into one functional area which we you know, both like um, and, and also look at a real example. So speaking to, you know, the sales and marketing um, organization at, at a company that's really uh, scaling before an IPO. Yeah, definitely. So, I, I mean, if you look at the, the sales section of this, what you'll see is the, there's a, a few VPs um, as well as directors and, and SDRs. The biggest thing that sticks out to me is obviously the, the, the SDRs and the training. I think those are, are two very, very important pieces. As you grow, it's so important to replicate and standardize what a good employee or a good salesperson is, is doing. And then how do we how do we scale out? Um, you may get lucky and get a rock star. You may get someone that is absolutely going to blow your mind day in, day out. They are also, uh, one of one possibly right you, you may not also ha have trouble to get people like that person but what you can do is put first people around that person and help them grow and maybe accelerate that person's path but also you really want to standardize something you want to be able to take in anybody with a good attitude and and, and then maybe a suit a, a few certain qualifications and make them and mold them into someone that's that's going to be successful you know within your business and Absolutely. in their career yeah. The, the other thing which which we see happening at this stage of, of a company is the specialization, right? So you have uh, it's you have you know different different parts of the go to market. Like you have the sales bucket, uh, which you know deals with uh, a, you know the the top of the funnel, closing of the business, uh, and then like the middle, right? The, the the success, right? You have a whole a whole team dedicated for that. Uh, once, once uh, you know, revenue converts, uh, and so, so CSMs uh, and, and a whole, a whole uh, organization uh, around that and training, uh, and then more like top of funnel, right? Your, your marketing uh, is, is really, you know, is, has to grow in order to support, to feed, right? So many, so many uh, mouths um, who, who are coming in. So, so really like each, each function is, is, is almost uh, is, is a function in of its own within within this uh, sales and, and marketing um, um, area. Yeah, each piece has a has a, a purpose, and uh, it makes the the whole thing work. I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I think like one one missing piece out of any of these buckets, like it may not be the end of your business that day, but I think when you grow when you grow past that point, right? When you keep on growing, it's like wait, we're, we're lacking here. Where the next time you go to get funding, you know, someone may point out, you know, you don't have this, this is a, this is either a red flag or this is going to cause, cause trouble if it hasn't yet. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Cause this is really the, 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 the life, uh, lifeline of the business. Uh, so, so, you know, thinking about this, uh, you know, go to market sales and marketing motion, let's take a look of, of, at a, at a, at a real, 
uh, company example that we can maybe you know talk through and think through uh, what a real org chart looks like um, in real life. So, so uh, John, tell us a little bit maybe about Gong, um, the, you know, the, the company as a whole, and like where where they're holding now, and what we can maybe we can dive in a little deeper into their into their sales team. Yeah, so, so Gong's been a fabulous business. They're scaling quickly, uh, huge out in California, but it looks like they're trying to expand globally soon, especially with the, the amount of money they're raising. Um, so they're just a, a software, a sales intelligence software that enables salespeople to do what they say, close deals faster and, and, and move quicker and just capture and understand your customers' needs a, a bit more and also have your own data to use. So, so I, I, I think it, they're going to be very successful. Um, and when you look at uh, their org chart, you can really see the growth and the, the kind of explosion yeah. waiting to happen, I would say. Yeah, exactly. So, so let, like you said, so, so Gong, uh, they, they currently raised, uh, I think it was a Series uh, E, uh, something like $250 million at a $7 billion valuation, which is, which is pretty uh, huge. And uh, they're, they're, so, so the, the company itself has about 800 employees. And then an org chart that we pulled from Chartloop has almost uh, 200 people, right, just in their, in their sales um, team. So if we, if we maybe zoom into, the, to, you know, maybe more kind of the, the leadership uh, or, or, right, thinking, thinking about uh, top down, I mean, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on, on how, you, uh, how you get here? Like, for example, we saw, yeah, we saw like, have, right, there, there's a C-level uh, at every, every function of the company. So we see here they have Ryan uh, Longfield, who's their CRO, and then there's several other VPs. Um, how, how does this, where, where does it, how, where do you start out by building this team and how do you reach, you know, this, this fully, fully scaled, uh, sales team? Yeah. So I think like alluding to our last video with the series A where there was maybe a salesperson along with the founder or, or like someone on the team that, that led, led sales in most cases, a lot of cases, the, the CEO or the founder will be doing that. Um, how you kind of get to here is you grow through individual contributors, revenue makers, giving people the opportunity to grow with the business. And then you start bringing in younger people as um, SDRs to assist those people. And then you bring in your pre-sales people. Obviously, as I, I would say like once you bring in three or four sales, senior sales execs, right? Really rank individual contributors that are worth investment, you want to match like one pre-sales person for every four, I would say. But when you start getting into, okay, now you have a team of eight, you're going to need that director sure. to kind of come between whoever was running your revenue before and those people, because it's going to get a little too complex and you're really going to want to start implementing um, data strategies and um, go to market strategies and you really want to know you know really be in the details and it, the scene the more senior person probably has 10 other things on his or her plate that they need to do so to bring in directors it, it's it's great but you never want to bring in a director too early you never want to have um a middle manager where a middle manager is not necessarily where, where there's no sure. necessity because then it's just kind of they're not going to bring in the production that gives them the reason to be there, I would say. Unless they're like a very good individual contributor slash director, but you know, you want to you want to kind of just bring in ICs, get to that point where a director is needed, then start bringing directors, and then maybe start thinking regionally. Um, ICs, yeah. revenue makers in, in the Northeast or in the Southeast, and then a director for each or two directors and then a, a regional VP, VP. And it seems like Gong's kind of taking yeah, that approach. And exactly. um, yeah, so that's how you do it, honestly. That, it, 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 it's, if, you, if you go too top heavy, you're gonna have problems bringing in people. It's kind of like who wants to go into an organization all very top heavy. So it's important to bring in younger people as well. If you go into an organization with just two junior people, or lack of experience, more senior people might say like, you know, that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. I, I don't want to be the only person I, I'll be in to spread. 
or spreadsheet sure. and you don't want to bring in directors or manager when there's no one to manage because that yeah. just doesn't so so what what we see here with this gong org chart is really they have these these regional vps uh i believe they started out in the us with uh with, with an office uh, headquarters in california uh, which we'll see in a second. That's really where the core of their of their team is. But then they've expanded. Like there's an office uh, presence now in Texas. I think they're open one in uh, in Atlanta. So so they're really uh, moving across. They even have like a VP, uh, you know, dedicated to strategic sales and a whole team around you know that does just the strat so the strat team. Um, but let's let's maybe dial in a second on right California. I just want to highlight here. So this is really where we could see, you know, from the drop down, there's there's a total of uh, 180 people in the U.S., but um, almost uh, 60 or 70 percent of them are in California. And the main the main buckets here is so we have so obviously we have uh, CRO and, and some of the VPs uh, and, and a few heads of like enablement. Uh, ben, and then we have we have this box with over 20. Uh, we can see uh, sales managers, right? So these guys are, are the managers of either sales, either either the SDRs or the, or the, or the reps themselves, like the AEs and the, and the enterprise sales. Uh, so 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 those that's the whole box over there. And then we have these two main main boxes where this is the this is the money making machine of the company we have here. Uh, 25 or, or 30 um, SDRs, BDRs, right? So, so supporting all functions of, of the business, right? So there's some, some doing the enterprise or some doing, uh, you know, mid-market and SMB. Uh, so, so that's that's all there. And then we have we have the account executives, right? The sales reps uh, themselves, um, about 50 of them, and that's really the bulk of of the company, right? Which is this is kind of of the core, and then they've they've started adding. Uh, up on top, so so that's that's a that's a really uh, you know a classic example of, of a SaaS org chart and specifically a sales team. They're also right. They're also uh, they sell sales technology, so so I'm sure they know what they're doing with their with their sales team. Um, but John, what what's your take on like you know at what point do you think of adding um, other other uh, regions? Like I can I I also imagine like isn't it like super challenging to hire sales reps? in San Francisco, in California, the comp, the, the living costs and all that? So it's competitive, but the market out there is definitely uh, stronger, more people, more of a presence in software and, you know, acts as a service offerings out there. So it makes it kind of a hub for it. So I would say it's not, uh, it's not the worst place to be recruiting for software. And it's actually, you know, kind of preferred. And I think you'll see companies move consistently out there still. And a lot of new companies um, be started there. I think the larger corporations where there's major tax benefits to move to a Texas will do it. But the talent, there's a there's a huge difference. Um, and there's just like that, that that's where it all started, honestly. Like th that's where that's where software as a service really became huge. And I mean, New York City is not bad as well. And New York City is a good spot to be, Northeast. What, in, in a sales, thinking about, about a, an enterprise sales team, what is the hardest hires uh, to make? Is it the individual contributors or is it more the VPs or? Hmm. Everyone, it, it really depends on, on timing. I would say in this market, really tough to get individual contributors who are doing well. Why? Because they probably have um, large equity in a business. And if you're at something like a blue chip business, you're at a Microsoft, you know, your equity did super, super well. Why would you look outward, um, you know, this, this, this year, but the, you know, to, to each their own, everything's, everything's, uh, right. you know, personal, well, so personal to people, but um, I find that people want to be managers more. Um, I don't. I don't think it's like they 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 want to work less, but it's like they want to go. They want a change, or they want to move up from an account executive role. Maybe they're just done with being an account executive. They feel that the strategies they've implemented as an executive should be used by other people, and, and that they can work with the business to help craft things like that. Right. It's. I would say finding the rainmaker. Finding the person, finding the woman 
that's gonna or, or the man that's gonna make your business like or, or always exceed targets that's the hardest thing to get and, and kind of to the first reason right they're probably doing super well in their current business if they're a star then they're probably getting paid well and if not then they've probably already have left and third they may have like equity in a business a long-term incentive plan in place for the business to retain them if the, if the business sees the value um totally but so, so maybe um nails is tough yeah so so maybe a final question before we wrap up here is did uh, remote you know uh culture change anything when it comes to, to building out such such a sales organization is it is it easier is it harder wow well, I would say I would say two things. Like, I think everyone also needs to kind of open up to this as well. That not everyone is made for a certain company or a certain role, and not every company is is a great fit for that person that they're maybe speaking to. Right? Maybe they interviewed someone who's amazing, and on one side, it's just not works. Maybe one person, maybe that person has a family at home and really prefers to work from home. And a company doesn't want to implement that. Well, then it's just not going to work. I don't think it should be an argument of, wow, you should let people work from home. It should be an argument of, okay, we, we have different goals. We, we have different um, ideas and strategies. And that's okay. That person can probably find a role working remote, especially now. I, I think companies are much more open to it. I think companies are going to be able to hire easily like more senior people like if you're hiring on senior people you're going to want to have them be able to work remote um it's it's just it, it is what it is or else you're really going to get beat out by other people younger people personally will probably want to be around other younger people i know there's people out there who are maybe even watching this video saying no way i don't want to do that but most most young people like coming out of college their their social interactions were in the office the friends they made were through the office things like that some people want for me i've always wanted to experience working in an office and living that life since i was younger so i'm gonna look for a business that enables me to do so um but yeah young people like it's great to have a lot together on gongs like sdr teams i wonder if they're remote or in account executive teams. i wonder if they're all remote or Maybe an office. I know it's complicated in in California, a bit different here in Florida. But right. yeah, like it, it creates really culture quickly sure. when you get a bunch of people in a room. But you want to be very, very, very like what what culture are we creating, right? And who's our culture maker? Who who's the person that's getting everyone fired up about something? Where are we going somewhere? But where are you guys going? right yeah that, that can there's a big difference between a company going to a sporting event or a circus or and a and a bar and downstairs and drinking right like those create almost different cultures okay. or maybe your cultures is we do all three um but those things are so important it, it, it's uh i could talk about it all day yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's like the hottest question uh, out there these days so maybe final thought uh what, what are your what are your takeaways what are learnings that we can take from uh uh, you know, taking your, your startup from a, you know, maturing business, B, C round up to an IPO um, or um, right, specifically looking at this gong org chart. What, what, uh, what can you suggest to other people building their SaaS org chart to do? It's going to be hard to recruit, but there's a reason, right? Everyone wants to grow their business. You're going to really have to beat out other people to do so. And, and that means implementing a strong process in your business, I imagine the way the, the the way Gong has grown, they probably have a really great hiring process. I don't know if anyone maybe can leave a comment below, but like I imagine they enable people to hire quickly and maybe fire quickly, or maybe they really do a strong like qualification screening on each piece, or maybe they're just looking for that like spark in someone, um, and and that gives them like the go ahead it's so important to like bring and implement a process where you can quickly hire so you can scale out your organization. And, and in some ways being specific isn't the worst thing, but you have to be okay with, it's going to take time and it's going to be expensive to, to hire. It really is. Absolutely. 
Well, this is fantastic. So, so just like you're saying, John, uh, Gong is known for their very incredible uh, culture. If you look on LinkedIn, everybody's following them to just kind of embed their their spirit, uh, and specifically in this this space of, of uh, sales intelligence and sales enablement. Uh, and and we have here a ton of learnings of you know taking your your org chart to the next level. And, and right, the next step uh, in in our in our series, we're going to dive into a real scaled up public company, how, how they're set up, uh, how, how their, their uh, SaaS org chart looks. But uh, feel free to leave us any comments, questions here. And uh, John and I would love to, um, to answer them. Thank you so much, John. This was fantastic. Awesome, Sean. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. Have a good one.